Remember that time Epcot taught you about your body? Today, we are talking about old Epcot. We did already talk about this. Yes, this is part two. This is all new content about old content. So if you're worried that like my favorite old school attraction wasn't listed here, don't worry. We probably already talked about it. And you can go watch our old video about old Epcot to see those. Especially in the breed love corner, I've got your nostalgia and your old stuff covered. Takes one to know one. World of Motion was an Ami Mover attraction. Here's the thing. I don't know a lot about 80s Epcot because I wasn't alive in the 80s. And I assume you cutting to breed love for him to talk about it because I know that he has big feelings about all these things. It's fun to be free. It's fun to be free. World of Motion is the attraction that was in the transportation pavilion before Test Track. It opened in 1982. It was an opening day attraction and sponsored by General Motors. Epcot started, they had different pavilion ideas. They wanted one about the ocean. They wanted one about space. They wanted one about transportation, communication, the land. And those themes still are, exist today. A dark ride, an Omnimover dark ride attraction that took you through the history of motion. Because this is, remember, this is back when Epcot was about edutainment. I miss me some Epcot edutainment. You know where I didn't feel edutained? On Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Did I feel like I had so much fun that I thought I was going to explode from pure fun? Yes. But did I feel edutained? No. The same way that Spaceship Earth tells you the story of communication through time, this taught you the story of transportation throughout time. Fun to be free! It's fun to be free! World of Motion was replaced by old Test Track, My Love, which is now new Test Track. Blech. I would love to see some sort of pseudo World of Motion come back. Maybe if we could we could update it for transport for today and into the future. I think that re-theming that attraction would be neat. I feel like if there was some way me and Breedlove can get into a time machine and just go back and ride these rides, we'd at least do it like once a week. I feel like I would like World of Motion better than Test Track. Yes, because anything is better than Test Track. So yeah, I do wish World of Motion was still around. Or I wish something decent would go into that building. Too much. I would say too much. Maybe too much about your body. Things that you didn't expect you would learn during a day at Epcot Center. Ah, oh, the wonders of life, Pavilion. Let's talk about it. It was wonderful and it was filled with life. Done. We've nailed it, team. Wonders of life was a whole pavilion. It is located next to what is now Mission Space, then Horizons, kind of that like gold building. Golden Dome Pavilion, located between um, where Mission Space is today and where, uh, well, now the Guardians attraction is, but at the time, Universe of Energy. It was sponsored by MetLife, and it was a pavilion that was based on like your body and your brain and your emotions. Because again, remember, we're learning. There's big old edutainment vibes. Epcot's all about learning back in the day. So this was the pavilion about health and human bodies. And you learned a lot about your body. What I remember the most about the Wonders of Life Pavilion is that really sketchy show with Martin Short about the birds and the bees, y'all. What can we say? What, like, what words can I say to, <laughs> to describe what happens in the Wonders of Life Pavilion? <laughs> What's off limits? I'd be like, yeah, kids, you're gonna learn about your body. I don't think I, I don't think my parents were like, you know what we should watch with our 10 year old? The making of me, come on, Quincy. I don't think they were like that. I don't think I ever saw this uh, gift. You would not want me to talk to your kids, but that's literally what it was. We're gonna go inside your body, kids. Oh man, body wars. Body Wars was great. Felt like a magic school bus episode, you know? You got shrunk down to uh, like very small size to go inside a body to help remove a thorn, I think. Same ride system as Star Tours, original Star Tours. And I'm not a fan of Star Tours, mostly because I do not enjoy being put into a shoebox and shaken. I find that experience particularly nauseating. You know what makes a simulator attraction better and something that definitely wouldn't make people more nauseated? 
blood. Lots of blood. In fact, the whole attraction is about blood. Not my cup of tea, but I'm not here to judge anybody whose it was. <laughs> Except I am judging you a little bit. Cranium Command was a weird show. Cranium Command was all about how your brain works, because it's the Cranium Command Center. I liked ostensibly being a small creature in a human head. And I like the idea of other small things in my head. And it starred a little kid named Buzzy. He was an audio animatronic. I love Buzzy. I stan Buzzy. If Buzzy has a million fans, I am one of them. If Buzzy has a hundred fans, I am one of them. If Buzzy has one fan, it's me. And if Buzzy has no fans, I'm dead. I feel like there should be a version of Wonders of Life Pavilion. I feel like it'd be interesting to see them take on, you know, um, a subject of health and just do it in a way that's inclusive and that's smart and that's fun and that is relevant to today. As I get older, the more I yearn for an Epcot I never went to because I think as a kid, I found Epcot really boring. But as an adult, I'm a lifelong learner now and I like learning. I think the best part of the Wonders of Life Pavilion is still around and that's the building itself. That golden dome is really cool and it's still there. It's being or has been restored and is going to be the play pavilion. And I am very excited about it. My theory is that it's going to be augmented reality or virtual reality or some combination of the two. It's supposed to be a new place with all new interactive technology, heavily themed to characters. It's supposed to be character experiences that you've never had before. And if I'm right, I want you all to remember this moment. And if I'm wrong, I want you all to forget it. Because I again wasn't stayed up with me alive. Okay, all right, here we go. Oh man, this is like, I think this is the most controversial one of these attractions. Figment fans, buckle up, it's your time. The original Journey of Imagination was the best version of Journey to Imagination at me at me folks okay because it was it was a dark ride and it introduced two brand new original characters dream finder and um, his method of sort of gathering inspiration for imagination and how he fuels the imagination of people and figment the purple dragon get it figment of your imagination who is uh, there to be both sidekick and muse. Figment as a character is fine. People always get mad when I say Journey into Imagination with Figment is the worst ride in Epcot. I'm not insulting Figment, I'm insulting the ride. I don't understand the obsession with this character. And I know that the editor is gonna have a field day because I don't care about this little stupid purple dragon. I'm stupid, I'm awful. I don't understand why people like me. I find him to be okay if a bit grating at times. Nope, I like, I am the pits. Let me tell you something. It gave us the iconic rainbow row, that rainbow light up tunnel. The content that I would have gotten if that was still open. I think I would like it too. I love a tunnel and I love rainbows. So re what replaced it um, was Journey into Your Imagination, which again, controversially removed not just Dreamfinder, but also Figment. And it was a big surprise when it closed because this was a beloved fan favorite attraction. And so there's so much outrage that two years later, they close it again for refurbishment. They keep the Nigel Channing lab, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience theme, but they add Figment back in. And the version we have now is like them trying to make it up to people, but it's not quite working. I do not know if I wish the original Journey into Imagination were still around because I do like the current iteration. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know. I know. I know you can stop the alligator TV. I can't I know. I wish he had a good ride. I wish I lo I wish he had a ride worthy of his name. No, this ride is not good. You know, we don't think it's good. It's just a, the only thing that we have left. But my main interactions with Figment is current ride with Nightmare Nigel Channing Moon and Skunk Smell. I love Figment. Figment's all we got, okay? I love Figment. 
Figment is the only thing we have left from this original ride. He ties everything together for us and the fans are obviously obsessed with him because they wait for hours and hours and hours in order to buy a piece of plastic resembling him. So that should say something. The fans love Figment, the fans love this original ride, and the fans really hold dear to their hearts the current version of the ride because it's all we have left. And it rained and it rained and it rained. So before Nemo came over and was like taking over y'all, we had the Living Seas. <sighs> the Living Seas, was an experience where you went down to, I believe it was Seabase Alpha. Seabase Alpha. Sponsored by United Technologies and opened in 1986. You had the Hydrolator, which is much like Space 220, now puts you in an elevator to space. The Hydrolator put you in an elevator to the, to the sea floor. Are you with me? We haven't abandoned the elevators to foreign landscapes concept. Then you would board the sea cabs tram dark ride kind of vehicle that would take you into where all the um, fish displays were. So the queue of the Living Seas was was very beautiful. It was a lot of lighting that made it look like you were underwater. And there was like, Ooh. you know, it was like spooky. Breedlove is very scared of the queue in the Finding Nemo ride. Nemo and Friends queue, I say, is the scariest attraction in Walt Disney World because it's like being in a haunted house themed after a, a beachside murder, okay? It's dark in there, all the lights are out, and it's creepy. Then, when Finding Nemo became such a smash hit, it was kind of a no-brainer when they were starting to add IP into Epcot that this would become a Finding Nemo themed pavilion. They started actually adding stuff into the sea base first. Some of the different activities and displays started featuring characters like Bruce the shark. By the way, did you know his name's Bruce? Because that was the name of the mechanical shark on Jaws. This ain't Jaws, listen. I think Nemo is a really good theme for this ride. I think this is, even though Nemo is not like a you know, you're not seeing like 60 minute waits for Nemo, but I think that Nemo was an excellent retheming, an excellent use of IP to make this more accessible, to get kids excited about it, to make them want to engage with the pavilion. It's one of the most effective uh, pavilion rethemes I think we've seen at Epcot. How do I feel about nostalgic Epcot? I think nostalgic Epcot is nice. I think it has a place. I think that it shows that there has been growth and change for Epcot. I. Frankly, that is good. Do you believe this question they're asking me? <laughs> I think that progress is good. And um, there's a time to like keep vestiges of the past as memory, but um, I'm, I'm generally fine with the changes that Epcot is making. I'm the king of nostalgic Epcot, okay? I stand nostalgic Epcot. That is my existence. I am nostalgia. I exist because of nostalgia. I found Epcot boring as a kid, so I unfortunately don't have great memories. But I wish I did, because now as an adult, a lot of this stuff sounds great. But I'm also really into futurism, and I love the future, and I love what's next. And that's what I loved about Epcot. I hope that the future of Epcot is as good as the past of Epcot, because I, you know, I like learning. That's lame. Who is calling me? Oh my gosh. Um, sorry. Girl, if you don't stop calling me, like what is a, no, over a lounge fly backpack. Child, stop. Um, oh my gosh, what is happening? I cannot talk to you, I'm working. Girl, I, I promise you, like what is happening? Okay, sorry. Hi, editor. Today we are talking about old Epcot. Why am I saying Epcot? It's no secret, I love old Epcot. Now go watch our other video on original Epcot rides.